Hello and welcome to the fourth portion of this series of lectures on repair and retrofit of structures with FRP products. Um, I'm assuming that by now you have uh, watched the other videos, especially the one, the first one of these on introduction to QuakeRap and FRP products. Uh, this particular module is the fourth one in this series where the focus of our presentation here is on various technologies that we have developed for repair and strengthening of pipelines. Um, we, we have four various technologies dealing with pipeline repair, renovation, or new construction. And these are listed here. The, the first one is wet layup, uh, then pipe medic laminates or super laminates, and then uh, stiff pipe and infinite pipe. Um, many of these are our patented technologies that we have uh, developed over the last few years. And we will be going through each of these in this presentation in a little bit more detail. So the first one is the wet layup, which is um, kind of the uh, old uh, granddaddy of all of these retrofit techniques. And as you have seen in our previous videos, these are some of the uh, products of quake wrap. So we have a uh, fabrics that are uh, glass fabric shown on white uh, on the right and carbon fabric shown in the black color on the left and various epoxies that are uh, mixed together in the field and applied to the fabric and then the saturated fabric is applied uh, on the pipe. So the method, this method can be uh, used for both exterior uh, repair of pipelines as well as internal wrapping of the, the pipe. Uh, and uh, basically the fabrics of carbon or glass can be saturated and wrapped around the pipe for additional strength. The fabrics typically come in rolls that are 24 to 48 inch or 600 to 1200 millimeter in width and very long rolls. Typical thickness of a layer of fabric is only about 0.05 inch or 1.3 millimeter. Um, the technique allows us to repair pipes of virtually any diameter as small as two inch diameter for internal repair. But then we can, of course, for uh, larger diameter or for any of these pipes, if you are repairing them on the from the exterior surface, um, the, the diameter can be uh, uh, virtually any size. For very small diameter pipes, if you are doing the repair internally, then we use a packer or a device which is like a balloon that can, you'll see it in some of the upcoming videos, we'll use a packer. Otherwise, if it is a larger diameter pipe, uh, we can do it by manned entry and apply it by hand. Wet layup can be used for both strengthening uh, spot repairs or joints within a longer pipeline, as well as repairing or strengthening full lengths of a section of a pipe. And we basically create a pressure vessel inside of the pipe by applying these materials to the surface of the pipe. So as an example here, let's assume that we have a 24 inch diameter pipe that is a cross section of it is shown on the right. And let's just assume that we have a particular carbon fabric that we are using shown on the left. This fabric has a thickness of about 0.05 inch and every one inch width of this fabric has a tensile breaking force of about 6,000 pounds. So if we put one layer of this fabric in the hoop direction inside of this 24 inch diameter pipe, as the free body diagram of the pipe is shown on the right, we have two breaking forces of 6,000 pounds for every one inch length of this pipe. And uh, we can simply calculate the pressure rating of this pipe to be 500 PSI or about 34 bar. Now, of course, in this example, I'm not including any factors of safety or any reduction in the capacity of the fabric, but this is just to illustrate uh, the concept to you. Now, if needed, we could add an additional layer of this same carbon fabric on top of the first layer. And by doing so, we basically double 
the pressure rating of the pipe from 500 psi to 1000 psi. Now you notice that in doing so, there is very little change in the thickness of the liner. We have gone from 0.05 inch to only 0.1 inch. So in terms of the capacity of the pipe, these types of repairs have um, very minimal impact on uh, the flow capacity of the pipe. The same concept can be used for uh, designing or retrofitting a pipe for uh, thrust or other loads uh, along the axis of the pipe. Uh, in this case, we would orient the fibers in the fabric to align with the axis of the pipe and uh, we can uh, increase or decrease the number of layers of fabric based on the force requirement at that particular location. We have uh, performed some independent testing of this system at various laboratories. The slide shown here is some work that was done by the uh, National uh, Indonesia National Oil Company, uh, Pertamina. And in this case, they have uh, taken a steel pipe and drilled a hole in it and then wrapped it with our wet layup system, as shown here. And then uh, the system was subjected to an internal pressure and it could resist up to about 1300 psi of pressure before seepage uh, through that uh, joint was, was noticed. Um, this type of repair has been used extensively by uh, Pertamina to repair pipelines that are in water and near the shorelines, as you can see in this slide. We have also used the same technique on land for repair of, in this slide, you see some of the pipes that we have uh, repaired in uh, one of the mines in Arizona. And again, uh, the pipe is wrapped uh, externally with the carbon fabric. For internal repair of pipelines, much of this work really initiated in about 1997-98 in response to the failure of pre-stressed concrete cylinder pipes. Um, this type of pipe is constructed by having a thin um, steel can which is wrapped on the outside of it there is a layer of mortar and this on top of that mortar a very tightly wound uh, wires of precessing wires under high tension are wrapped at a fairly tight spacing. Um, without going into the details of it for some reasons that are beyond the scope of our presentation, but some of these wires in some of these pipes have uh, corroded over the years and that results into a uh, very uh, abrupt failure of the pipe as shown in, in this slide. You see here this is a 96 inch diameter pipe that uh, basically explodes when, when you have a failure, sudden failure like that. And in these cases, within minutes, you have uh, virtually rivers running down the city and causing a lot of uh, collateral damage, of course. So the way these FRP products work, if you take a look at a um, pipe that is subjected to internal pressure, these internal pressures cause stresses both in the hoop direction as well as in along the axis of the pipe as shown here with these arrows. This is one of the advantages of FRP products that we can uh, determine the orientation of the fiber to align with the ax the direction of the stresses that, that we have and that results into an economy in the design. So I thought I'd share with you some of the projects that we have done in this. This particular one is a um, for power service of New Mexico. It's the San Juan generating station where uh, they had uh, previously uh, some failure of one of their 120 inch diameter uh, PCCPs in their cooling system. Many of these uh, power plants, they use uh, pre-stressed concrete cylinder pipes as a part of their cooling system. So as you notice here, the um, in in a project like that the workers and all of the equipment are designed to pass through the uh, access ports or typically 24 inch diameter access port everything can be lowered into the pipe all of the scaffolding and the saturating machine and so on once inside the pipe 
the station is set up and the crew saturate the fabric and apply it to the inner surface of the pipe per design requirements uh, that how many layers and so on and on the lower uh, left you can see the uh, almost completed pipe and in the next slide you know once the installation is complete we can apply a top coating of uh, various for various types of protection on the surface of the pipe the on the right and bottom of this slide that this was some additional work that we were doing on this project where they had already uh, inserted a steel liner in some portions of the pipe uh, but that liner in, in uh, steel liner was not grouted uh, against the hose pipe and so we were providing that grouting to make sure that the two are working together uh, this project by the way was uh, awarded in 2008 an award of excellence from international concrete repair institute um, another case study is presented here this is an interesting project where an italian construction company had constructed a uh, new power plant for the government of costa rica and uh, the penstock or the pipe that you see here is a concrete pipe that uh, starts at the uh, from the reservoir at the top of the mountain and it is 1750 meters or about 1.1 mile long only the initial part of this pipe is above ground but after several hundred feet it is below ground and it uh, goes towards the base of the mountain where the turbine uh, structure is mounted the pipe has a diameter of about 2.1 meter or um, roughly 84 uh, inches uh, you notice the sloped uh, terrain in that area that makes the repair more challenging and the, this pipe was constructed on site and when the construction was complete and they tried to put water in the pipe they realized that they had uh, a mile long sieve basically millions of holes in this pipe and the pipe could not hold any water they had attempted to uh, fill some of the cracks in the pipe with uh, epoxy but they noticed that again as the pipe was filled with water the internal pressure of the pipe would open up those cracks and uh, leakage would continue so it was at this time that they had contacted us to see if we could help them with this pro problem um, another challenge aspect of this project was that this pipe had only four access ports at the bottom of four wells the access ports are two feet by two feet or 600 by 600 millimeter and the techniques that uh, we present here uh, practically all of them are totally trenchless so that we require zero or no excavation now in this particular project the inside of the pipe was very rough and um, as you might expect the fabrics of frp um, they should not be applied to a jagged surface so we used a number of workers for a few days to uh, grind and uh, sandblast or grind uh, with hand tools to get rid of all the sharp edges inside of the pipe and, and clean the surface of the pipe then the actual repair starts by uh, saturating the rolls of fabric outside of the pipe because this pipe had four access ports we set up one set of crew uh, corresponding to each of those access points and the saturated rolls of fabric then are passed through that opening that is shown in this slide and inside of the pipe we had the crew with the runners going back and forth to deliver the fabric to the crew then the fabric would put the roll of fabric on the uh, the crew would install that on the surface of the pipe and uh, here as you can see uh, the overlapping joints with a little bit darker color are shown on the lower right figure so the bands of fabric are four feet or 1.2 meter wide and every band of fabric uh, advances us about 1.2 meter or so roughly along the length of the pipe and finally we can uh, apply a top coating on top of this pipe the 
challenge for this project was that they, it was not uh, the issue was not particularly strengthening of the pipe, but the client wanted to make sure that the pipe was ac absolutely watertight and with no leaks. And uh, the project was completed in 2009, and uh, the pipe has been performing uh, very satisfactorily since. Um, some facts about this project: this is the largest FRP single pipe repair of this nature uh, by any company in, in the world. And we uh, installed these uh, liners at a rate of about 10,000 square feet per day. There was a total of 150,000 square feet of fabric to be installed and that aspect of the project was completed in only 15 days. Um, this liner now is designed to provide a watertight membrane on the inside of the pipe and it also so it would prevent corrosion any future corrosion of the steel within the pipe but uh, it would also provide some uh, structural strength uh, in terms of hoop strength as well as longitudinal uh, strength of the pipe uh, the liner will require virtually no maintenance and uh, the total shutdown for this project was uh, three weeks and in that three weeks we were able to finish this project from beginning to end including one week for surface preparation which is something that we normally would not run into in most of the project and another two weeks for uh, installation of this 150,000 square feet of fabric. As I mentioned the penstock was repressurized in July of 2009 and it is now in full service and we have received uh, two awards from various agencies uh, international awards for this project. Another project that uh, has some unique features I thought I would share with you is this uh, in a uh, pipe, it's a steel pipe in a sewage treatment facility in uh, Carlsbad, California. And uh, this 42 inch pipe, uh, it is curved and uh, it is in a section where uh, it is buried and curved but it, it also supports traffic above. And what we have noticed in recent years is that some of our clients are asking that if we are going to repair these pipes, let us assume that at some point in the future, the host pipe will totally disintegrate. So they are asking for a repair that not only would take the internal pressure of the pipe, but would also be able to support the external gravity loads on the pipe. As you know, the ladder is a matter of uh, stiffness and rigidity of the pipe and buckling of the liner so that requires to a multi-layered system to come up with a thick uh, liner basically. Another point to keep in mind is that uh, in repair of these types of pipes we cannot allow steel and uh, carbon fiber to come in contact directly. Uh, this causes a galvanic corrosion because the two are these similar metals. So as you can see here on this slide, when we have a steel pipe to repair, we first apply a layer of glass on the interior surface of the pipe, and then we apply the uh, additional layers of carbon. Now in this particular project, we had to apply seven layers of carbon uh, to come up with the thickness or the rigidity of the pipe to resist the uh, external loads. For internal pressure only two layers of carbon would have been sufficient for this but the additional five layers were really there to provide the rigidity for this pipe and this is one of the reasons I'm emphasizing this here because as you will see later this is why uh, the reason why uh, we have invented uh, a type of pipe that we refer to as stiff pipe. But you notice here that uh, on the lower right figure, these types of wet layoff system does allow us to uh, manage curved pieces of pipes and uh, basically um, any geometry can be easily handled by applying this material to the surface. Um, speaking of geometry and challenging geometries, that's really one of the advantages of wet layoff system. And as uh, you can see in this 
particular slide this was a job that we had recently completed where in a uh, hydroelectric power plant we have two uh, 84 inch diameter or uh, sorry 296 inch or 8 foot diameter pipes that are merging together into a 10 foot diameter pipe and right at that location there is in addition to having that Y connection there is a 20 foot drop in elevation of the uh, uh, 120 inch pipe so it, it's a very challenging geometry and uh, one that is best suited for repair with this wet layoff system and uh, this was a project that we completed in 2015 um, this wet layoff can also be applied to non-pressure applications and so I thought here I'll share with you for example uh, this particular job was for the DC sewer where they had some 96 inch uh, diameter fiberglass pipes that were brand new pipes recently installed but one section of a 20 foot long piece of this pipe was damaged and uh, it wasn't clear whether it was the pipe was damaged prior to installation or during the installation uh, but in those cases we can set up our saturating machine outside of the pipe if it's a smaller job we can set it up outside of the pipe then the rolls of fabric are saturated and sent uh, through the access ports into the pipe and they are installed as you can see here uh, so we have uh, that particular section of the pipe 20 foot plus a couple of feet on either side of the joint has been repaired this way um, we can also use various types of chemistry in our resins um, for for example for sewer when you have h2s gases present we can use different types of resins uh, compared to um, potable water pipes where our system is actually certified by nsf 61 for potable water applications another um, project here is is for repair of a uh, culvert and and this particular uh, project was in uh, North Dakota where North Dakota DOT wanted to try several products to see how these joints on these culverts that were moving because of the freeze thaw action could be fixed so the pipes themselves or the culverts they were about 90 feet long but in cross section they were oval shaped 54 inches high by 88 inches wide uh, and again the concern was to fix the uh, joint movement that was uh, caused by freeze thaw action so for these types of repairs again uh, the wet layoff system uh, works very nicely because it is versatile and can be applied to any shape or size of pipe and in this case we used uh, 50 inch wide bands of fabric um, that come in rolls of about 50 yards long and um, if we used you know we did use on one case carbon and another one uh, glass carbon also has the added advantage that it is uh, has excellent resistance to alkali and this installation was completed in October of 2009 and then uh, the intent was to observe the behavior of this after some time so because the job was a relatively small job we can set up a, a temporary saturation station on a table as you can see here the crew are uh, saturating the bands of fabric and then a layer of uh, tack coat or epoxy is applied to the surface of uh, the pipe um, if some of these terminologies are not familiar to you i uh, invite you to make sure that you uh, review our introduction uh, video which is the part one of these four series uh, four part series uh, and then the layers of fabric so on some one of the pipes we were applying uh, two layers of carbon there was another pipe that we did with two layers of glass and so this is the finished view of the pipe as you can see the oval shape of the pipe and after two winters uh, North Dakota DOT tried to remove these liners both the glass and the carbon from the uh, culverts 
and uh, they realized that they were so uh, well bonded that they would not come loose easily they had to jackhammer uh, the liner away from the pipe and in the process they took away chunks of concrete that was still attached to the back of the epoxy uh, of this liner and there, there is a, a report that they have published on this by North Dakota DOT if, if any of you are interested in uh, so the second uh, technology that we have developed for uh, this repair of pipes is called pipe medic super laminates and in this is a technique where we have developed a um, system where we can put one or more layers of the fabric together and apply uh, the resin and heat and pressure to it and from those fabrics we uh, create a pre-cured laminates like you see on the right that I'm holding. These laminates have the advantage that they can actually, they're not flexible like the fabrics anymore. Uh, even though their thickness is very small, we have thicknesses that vary from 0.01 inch to 0.025 inch, uh, but, the, but they manage to hold basically their own shape as you can see and uh, very high tensile strength the tensile strength of these laminates is around up to 150,000 psi and uh, the fact that they are manufactured in a plant environment gives them a much better quality so let me show you how with some of these projects you know we can uh, use these materials by the way as you notice here for example one of the things we can do is in laminating these fabrics we can put a layer of glass on both faces of it and by doing so, then the, this laminate can be directly placed inside of a steel pipe and we do not need to have a second uh, layer of glass as a protection between the carbon and steel pipe, as I had mentioned earlier. So um, again, these uh, super laminates, as they're called, they have a you know, thickness of about 0.025 inch typically. Uh, and the, the tensile strength is three to four times that of steel. Um, the installation of it would require that we put a coat, uh, uh, we put a layer of epoxy or tack coat on the uh, face of the, that laminate and wrap it around a packer. And then um, they can be used to repair pipes that range from two inch in diameter to uh, 36 inch or slightly larger and uh, primarily these are used because the laminates are four feet wide we primarily use these to uh, repair uh, spot repair of uh, joints or short pieces of pipe uh, here again we have the uh, capacity or the strength of these laminates listed and you can see that uh, they uh, the tensile strength for example goes from the maximum of about 155,000 psi uh, to uh, 62,000 psi uh, and also the modulus of elasticity is listed here in comparison for example on the blue column the last column I have listed one of the uh, products that Institute form offers for their structural repair of uh, pressure pipes and as you can see they have a tensile strength of only 6,000 psi which is significantly lower than the products that we are offering. Uh, so uh, here in this video I thought uh, it would be interesting for you to see how we would repair a uh, an 8 inch diameter pipe, a, a section of this pipe that we want to repair internally with the uh, pipe medic laminates and using a uh, packer uh, or a carrier uh, so we first you know take this packer and put a little bit of um, inflated with air to give it some rigidity then it's uh, plastic sheet is wrapped around it to protect it the epoxy is mixed and applied on the back of the laminate and as you can see the laminate is then wrapped around this packer and held together with a uh, with some thread and then once the packer is inside of the pipe we monitor its location with a uh, closed circuit TV and inflate the packer and then the once the 
laminate is stuck to the surface of the pipe, we deflate the packer and pull it out uh, of that. Um, one of the applications of this project, that you know, product we have been using it extensively for uh, some of the gas utility companies, and in this case, they had an interesting, uh, challenging project or problem that they were uh, seeking to solve. In the New England portion of the U.S., the, many of the gas utility companies are lining their old uh, gas transition lines uh, with a liner. Uh, the purpose of these liners, which are uh, non-structural, basically is to uh, prevent leakage of the uh, pipe at the joints and, and also enhance flow through the pipe. But the problem is that these liners being non-structural, they rely on the strength of the pipe. And at the same time, many of these old existing uh, gas mains, they do have some drip pots, which are shown here. These drip pots were placed in the original construction of the pipeline to collect condensation that might be present in the gas, and then they would siphon that condensation at the street level. Now, Nowadays, with the use of the gases that are in, in being used, we do not need this type of drip pot. But the presence of the drip pot causes a challenge because as you pressurize the, the liner, the liner blows up at those drip pot locations. So the challenge really is that how do you create a pipe to span across that drip pot so that the pipe can be lined? And typically, these liners are, or the drip pots are about two feet uh, in diameter. So we want to bridge a gap that is about two feet long. So for this project, we set up a demonstration at the contractor's yard before doing it in the field. Here, uh, there is a 16-inch diameter uh, pipe that we have uh, cut in two halves and put the two pieces two feet apart, uh, this is clearly more severe than the condition that is actually present in the field, because in the field we do have at least a part of the pipe present. But we are here, we have just totally separated the two, and we will try to make a bridge uh, this gap for them. So as you see in this video, uh, we take a piece of this pipe that is, or, or the laminate, which is four feet wide by about 11, 12 feet long, and put uh, some uh, epoxy over the surface of this, hold it together with these strings while it is wrapped around the packer, and then we send it into the pipe, and with a camera we monitor its location. When it gets to the final location, two feet of the laminate is in the middle over the, the gap, and one foot on either side of the gap. Then we inflate the bladder, and as you can see, these layers of the laminate slide against each other, and you create a perfectly fitting pipe inside of the pipe. The thickness of this liner that we created in this manner is only, even the three layers, it's only about roughly 0.1 inch. So it's very uh, difficult to even detect it after you uh, put that uh, structural or non-structural line through. So uh, the Gas Technology Institute uh, took over the testing of this uh, because they believe that many of their other clients are also interested in this technology. So the sample that you saw, as well as two additional samples that were constructed, they were uh, capped at the end and subjected to internal pressure after instrumentation as shown here. These pipes typically operate at 60 PSI, and the standard is to push test them to four times that value. So they stop the test at 250 PSI internal pressure, uh, and of course there was no damage to any of the uh, pipe medic super laminates. But if you look at the measured strains that are shown in this graph, you, you notice that the pipe was nowhere near its maximum capacity. And in fact, if we were going to pressurize the pipe to cause bursting of the uh, pipe medic laminates, 
this pipe would have taken a uh, an internal pressure of around 900 psi. Uh, all of this work was done for the first for a project that we had in mind. That this project was for an actual pipe that needed to be repaired in February of 2011. Uh, the client was uh, PSENG, which is a New Jersey gas utility. The contractor was Pro Progressive Pipeline Management out of uh, New Jersey. And the actual pipe, similar to the model that we were testing, had a two-foot gap in a 16-inch cast iron pipe. That repair was done in a uh, in cold winter uh, time in New Jersey. And the pipe was actually placed under an active railroad track in Newark, New Jersey. And all of these repairs were done from a remote uh, location about 500 feet away without even letting the railroads, uh, getting them involved for permitting issues. And uh, as a result, this f very first application of uh, this technology received the highest uh, award from the trenches technology for a project of the year award in 2011. And since that time, we have used this technique to over um, 40 or so of uh, similar projects uh, you know, throughout the US. Uh, now we come to the third technology that we have developed, which is uh, called stiff pipe. Uh, and uh, so stiff pipe is, if, if you recall, you know, the, the one I, we looked at this project before where there was a pipe that we used wet layout technique. And I mentioned to you that in that case, even though we only needed two layers of uh, carbon for internal pressure, but because of the fact that they wanted to have a rigid liner to allow uh, external gravity load on it, we ended up using seven layers of uh, carbon. The problem with these things is that these types of repair, they become very expensive and time consuming. And these two are some of the obviously uh, biggest disadvantages of this system to our clients. So in an attempt to overcome these shortcomings, uh, we have developed a, a new technique. And, uh, you know, if, if you look at, for example, the... Uh, construction of I-beams, it's always used uh, in for, for uh, ages in uh, co construction of buildings and bridges, and we take advantage of that. But let's look at how we could do the same thing in pipelines, which nobody uh, until this time had paid much attention to. So if, um, uh, if I you can imagine here that I can show two layers of um, carbon fabric one on top of another with a total thickness of T. And let's just say that this has a relative stiffness of one. Now, if I insert something between these two layers to give them, uh, set them a little bit apart from one another as shown here, uh, we can, if we make the overall thickness two times T, now we have increased the rigidity by sevenfold. And if we do that even further, you know, let's say to four times the total thickness, we have increased the rigidity by 37 uh, times. In doing so, going from left to right on this slide, we have not really added much weight or cost to this uh, pipe. Uh, but by um, cleverly positioning these layers of carbon at a distance, just like an I-beam, we are increasing the rigidity of the pipe significantly. On the top portion of this, you can see some samples of the products that we use to achieve or to build up basically that web portion of the I-beam. This can be either three-dimensional fabrics or some honeycomb products uh, that, that we use. So uh, this pipe has been um, over the last few years, we have done extensive testing of this, both at, at Texas Research Institute as well as uh, Louisiana Tech uh, University Center for um, Trenchless Technologies. So the manufacturing process of this pipe uh, begins by uh, making a mandrel, as shown here, with adjustable legs 
that can be pushed in and out to achieve this, the correct diameter that we want for the pipe. Then the layers of glass or carbon are applied around that mandrel and we also embed a layer of honeycomb in there. And um, then the pipe is constructed and typically it is cured in ambient temperature within a day or so. And the result is a very strong and lightweight pipe. So uh, in this slide, for example, here on the, uh, this was a project for uh, Avalon uh, pump station in Southern California. And we were uh, trying to line seven pieces of steel, 48 inch diameter steel pipe that were very badly corroded. And the pipes that you see on the left that were made for this project, we made these pipes such that the outside diameter of these stiff pipes were only 47 and a quarter inch. So on the right slide, as you can see, the stiff pipe has been inserted into the 48 inch pipe and very little annular space uh, has been lost. Uh, this technique obviously has ad, uh, applications in repair of culverts also. Uh, as you know, many of the corrugated metal pipe culverts uh, have issues with their invert corroding with, with years of use. And uh, this uh, similar to a bridge that would uh, limit the load ca carrying capacity of a freeway, these culverts could do the same, cause the same type of concern. And, uh, um, replacement costs, you know, it causes usually delays and costs a lot and traffic disruption. So uh, it would be uh, of interest to come up with a system that would allow us to repair these without uh, disruption of. The ARC Terminal Culvert Repair in Mobile, Alabama was completed in December 2012. Construction of the 18-inch diameter stiff pipe starts by wrapping two layers of saturated glass fabric around a mandrel, then applying a layer of honeycomb, followed by two more layers of fabric. Due to acceptation, the client wanted the pipe sections to be only 8 feet long. The pipe sections can be connected together using a slightly larger sleeve that is made of the same stiff pipe design. Tests by independent laboratories have proven the strength of the pipe. The 60 foot long foot long sections of stiff pipe weigh about 50 pounds each. In the field, the stiff pipe segments were connected together and pushed into the culvert by hand until the entire pipe was lined. The annular space between the culvert and stiff pipe was filled with grout, leaving a very smooth pipe in place. Please watch videos of other similar projects on our YouTube channel. The ARC Terminal Culvert Repair in Mobile, Alabama was completed in December 2012. Construction of the 18-inch diameter stiff pipe starts by wrapping two layers of saturated glass fabric around a mandrel, then applying a layer of honeycomb, followed by two more layers of fabric. Due to acceptation, the client wanted the pipe sections to be only 8 feet long. The pipe sections can be connected together using a slightly larger sleeve that is made of the same stiff pipe design. Tests by independent laboratories have proven the strength of the pipe. The 60 foot long foot long sections of stiff pipe weigh about 50 pounds each. In the field, the stiff pipe segments were connected together and pushed into the culvert by hand until the entire pipe was lined. The annular space between the culvert and stiff pipe was filled with grout, leaving a very smooth pipe in place. Please watch videos of other similar projects on our YouTube channel. In uh, this slide, I have some um, another recently completed project that we had in, you know, this, this happened to be a project which is about a thousand miles from Brisbane, the closest city to this uh, repair site in uh, Queensland, Australia. And um, there was an 80 foot long, uh, six foot diameter culvert that we were strengthening. So as you see here, the pieces of the pipe were made, uh, four pieces, each 20 foot long were constructed uh, 
not far from the site and they were shipped to the job site and then as you see in this slide these pieces were lowered adjacent to the entrance to the pipe and they were pushed into the pipe uh, the remote site of this job uh, if ordinary pipes such as like steel or concrete pipes were to be used to slip line this culvert uh, you would need a lot of heavy jacking equipment and the remote site uh, would add significantly to the cost of this but as you can yep. see in this slide the, this pipe is so light that can be easily pushed by hand and two men can easily push it to get it into place So um, another advantage of this stiff pipe is that it can be easily made into any shape or form. As an example, if you have an oval shape, uh, culverts like shown here, uh, one possible repair is to put a uh, 36 inch cylindrical pipe in there, in which case you lose about 40% of the capacity. Or you can alternatively make a stiff pipe of the same shape or size and only uh, reduce the flow capacity by by five percent uh, this type of pipes that you see in the lower right not only can be used for repair of these culverts but many of the older sewer pipes or brick lined sewer pipes have these types of teardrop shapes and and uh, can be now easily uh, retrofitted with a structural uh, pipe uh, that is made with this uh, stiff pipe technology. Um, I thought here, you know, I'll present a an actual case study that we were doing for a client. So this was a about a mile long of a 36 inch uh, pre-stressed concrete cylinder pipe that they were looking at providing a fully structural solution for the pipe. So that required six layers of carbon to be installed inside of this pipe. And as you notice, with a 36 inch diameter pipe, it's rather challenging to get uh, all of these layers installed. So we constructed samples of this liner, uh, some with just six layers of carbon and another one with just using actually not even carbon, using glass to be a conservative design. And as you can see in these tests, the stiff pipe alternative is about 2.1 times stiffer than the six layers of carbon that uh, would, should have been used if, if we were only going to use the wet layup system. So uh, to compare the cost and the benefits of these, let's just look at the activities that are required to repair this pipe with six layers of carbon. So in that case, you have to saturate these two foot wide bands of fabric typically outside of the pipe and then they, these would be carried into the pipe and given to the crew to walk back and forth inside of the pipe and install them and depending on the location of and the number of access ports these may be a thousand feet or so away for the crew to walk inside of the pipe and then the crew will apply the fabric to the inside of the pipe and also they have to make sure that there are no air bubbles or voids uh, entrapped behind the fabric and this process has to be repeated six times for the six layers of fabric that has to be installed and then each day uh, we would make some witness panel test of the fabric and send it to a laboratory for later on testing to tell us if the material was met the required strength or not and, and unfortunately, by the time the results come back, you know, the project may be too far advanced or, uh, you know, the installation may be complete. But in contrast, if we were going to be using the stiff pipe alternative, we would make all of, we would make a mandrel that would uh, match the shape and size of this pipe with very little space to be lost. And 
pieces of the stiff pipe three feet or ten feet long as as much as what would be feasible could be made uh, outside of the pipe and prior to the actual uh, opening of the pipeline in advance these pieces would be transported to the job site and then uh, positioned you know along the uh, entrance to the pipe and once uh, the uh, pipe is access is provided these pieces are carried inside of the pipe and uh, connected next next to each other with uh, the joint will be sealed as i'll show you later and then the annular space between the host pipe and uh, this stiff pipe would be filled with either resin or, or graft so uh, in terms of time and cost for for a project like that if we were to install six layers of carbon uh, we would uh, require approximately all of the work of course has to be done inside of the pipe and this would take about over 20,000 hours uh, to, to complete the project at the cost of roughly six and a half million dollars in contrast if we use this stiff pipe technology we would only need two layer of carbon and a core in the middle and much of the work will be done before the pipe is even open so it would cut down significantly on the construction time inside of the pipe uh, and we would only require a 3000 hour window to work uh, you know the, for the work and the cost would be lower to two and a half million so as you notice we have this technology results in significant savings both in terms of time and and money for the project um, the installation of these stiff pipes, as I mentioned to you, uh, they can be, you know, the, the, once these custom made pieces are made, they're pretty lightweight. So as you can see, a person can easily lift these up. Uh, they only weigh about um, one and a half pounds or so per square foot, uh, roughly 10% of the weight of conventional pipes or even less. And then the ends of these, we can bevel the edges so like this could be one type of connection detail at the end that one of the ends would be beveled like that and the other end would have a piece of dry fabric that is not fully saturated and then once the pipes two pieces are inserted inside the pipe as you see on the left that dry fabric is saturated if, if it is a man entry size pipe the dry fabric is saturated to provide a continuous one piece pipe and then the annular space between uh, the host pipe and stiff pipe is filled with uh, graft there are uh, other types of um, connections that can be made like rubber gaskets and here are a few examples of some of those um, and uh, you know th these are typical of what is used in other types of pipelines in the industry of course uh, we can also use existing fittings uh, for uh, p connections or y connections for example and drill into the stiff pipe as shown here and use uh, existing uh, connections from other manufacturers to make these connections uh, one of the applications of stiff pipe is in repair and strengthening of manholes uh, as you know manholes are typically constructed of brick lined or concrete lined vertical pipes with a cone on the top and uh, the formation of h2s gases causes deterioration of these structures when we look at the uh, loading that is exerted on a typical manhole because of the gravity loads of the traffic above the manhole is subjected to lateral pressure so it more or less really acts like a pipe that is uh, buried under direct traffic action and as a result just putting a coating on the inside of the manhole may not be the best solution using stiff pipe we can perform a repair by removing uh, the cone from the top of the manhole and uh, once that area is accessible we would build a, a stiff pipe which is basically this slightly uh, reduced size of the uh, manhole and because these are very light they can be lowered into position inside of the manhole in one piece the lower edge of the uh, stiff pipe will be sealed against the manhole and then the annular space between the 
uh, stiff pipe and manhole is filled with grout and uh, subsequently the cone can be uh, back in place and uh, paved over to bring it back to its original uh, state if necessary. So that brings us to the last uh, product that we have developed and this is uh, this uh, infinite pipe. Um, infinite pipe is basically as you see in this video is the same concept of stiff pipe except that uh, we realize that this is a method of construction of a pipe that lends itself greatly to automation and continuous manufacturing in the field. So let's watch this video and I think you know it is uh, self-explanatory. This video demonstrates the development of Infinite Pipe, a game-changing patent-pending technology developed by Professor Moasani. Funding for this development is provided by the U.S. National Science Foundation through a Small Business Innovation Research SBIR, grant. The technique allows us to build a pipeline of virtually any size and length on site. The pipe has few joints so there will be no leaks. Infinite pipe can be designed for any internal pressure. There will be minimal transportation costs since the pipe is made on site. The pipe will not corrode. No cathodic protection is required. The pipe can be directly placed in a trench or used for slip lining existing pipes. Construction of the pipe can begin within a few days of the placement of the order. The mobile manufacturing unit can produce 2 miles or 3 kilometers of pipe per week and as it travels along the road, it leaves a continuous pipe behind. The pipe weighs less than 10% of conventional pipes allowing easier and safer handling in the field. Infinite pipe is a sustainable green technology. Construction of the pipe begins by wrapping multiple layers of resin saturated carbon or glass fabric and a spacer such as a honeycomb sheet around a mandrel. The number of layers and the type of fiber, carbon or glass will be designed by our engineers based on the project requirements. The mandrel is heated and within a few minutes the pipe is completely cured. Next, the mandrel is partially collapsed and the cured pipe is slipped off the mandrel, leaving a small piece of the finished pipe on the mandrel. This process is repeated in a continuous manner to construct an endless pipe as the mobile manufacturing unit moves, every 10 minutes, 10 feet, 3 meters of pipe will be finished. The long segments of the pipe can be connected together using the wet layup system that is commonly used in construction of fiberglass pipes. Independent tests at the Trenchless Technology Center, Louisiana Tech University, have demonstrated the strength of this pipe. As an example, this 8-inch, 200 millimeter diameter pipe weighs less than 2.5 pounds per foot or 3.5 kilograms per meter and can be handled effortlessly. Yet, the lightweight pipe can support the weight of a truck driving over it even when the pipe is not fully embedded in soil. Please contact us for more information about this revolutionary technology. So, um, in the example of the infinite pipe that you saw, the diameter of this pipe is about 8 inch or 200 millimeter. It has a thickness of 0.2 inch or 5 millimeter, and it weighs only about 2.5 pounds per linear foot of, of the pipe. And it is good for a pressure rating of approximately 500 psi you know without any factors of safety but even with the factor of safety we still have quite a significant pressure rating for this pipe and the materials cost not in, in excluding the cost of the equipment and the labor so on but the materials cost is only about seven dollars a foot for such a high relatively high pressure rated pipe and keep in mind that as this pipe is manufactured and it comes out of that mobile manufacturing unit you're basically done with the pipe there is no additional labor required to you know, connect the pieces of the pipe in the field as it is with conventional pipes some of the advantages of this whole concept uh, i have shown them in here and one is that we can easily change the number of layers of the fabric as we make this pipe based on the pressure requirement. So, for example, if you're if there's a pipeline that, for example, going up a steep hill on the base of the hill uh, hill where we have a perhaps higher pressures, we may need 
you know, four layers or more layers of fabric and it would be more expensive. And as you go up along this slope, we can cut down on the number of the layers of fabric and uh, lower the cost of the pipe uh, without really changing uh, you know, any of the dimensions of it. And very easily these adjustments can be done uh, on the fly. Uh, likewise, if there is an application where the pipe has to span across an opening, we can, for example, over that opening segment, we can add additional layers of fabric in the longitudinal direction to make a beam out of the pipe and give it additional bending strength. And then once it comes on uh, the two sides and it is unrested, uh, uh, where we don't need those longitudinal layers, they can be eliminated and, uh, you know, keep the cost of the pipe uh, quite low. Another application of this is for uh, repair of subsea pipelines. And here we've shown that these are typically pipes that are uh, from the shore. They go to an offshore platform for uh, in the oil and gas industry for ships to load and unload their uh, cargo. And uh, many of these pipes are now reaching their useful age and they are corroding. In this case, we could set up the mobile manufacturing unit on shore. And as the liner is manufactured, because it is very lightweight, it could be easily uh, winched into the host pipe and giving a complete one piece liner for um, a mile or longer, whatever the length of that uh, subsea pipeline is, we can uh, line it with that. So some other potential applications for infinite pipe, we can use this product for new pipelines, whether it is for water, sewer, oil, or gas industry. It can be used in horizontal directional drilling or HDD projects. The light weight of this uh, pipe and the fact that it can have tremendous tensile strength along its length, it lends itself as an ideal candidate for these types of uh, pulling applications. Uh, the pipe can be used to slip line a culvert. And imagine if you have a very long culvert, we can set up this equipment in front of the culvert. And as the infinite pipe is manufactured, it is dragged into the host culvert. And then finally, when we have the right length, we can uh, fill the annular space uh, between the infinite pipe and culvert with the grub. You have already seen the application of it for slip lining of uh, corroded subsea pipelines in the previous one. And something even more space age, as you know, these days you might have heard of this hyperloop project that is being uh, tossed around for a uh, fast transportation system between cities, uh, initially between Los Angeles and San Francisco. This system requires basically a very long uh, tube and this infinite pipe could potentially be a great solution for that type of application uh, as well. Uh, well, we've come to the end of this uh, portion of the presentation. Again, I want to remind you that as you see on this slide, this series of presentations are composed of four different modules. Uh, we have just completed the fourth module, which was on pipe repair technology. And I invite you to uh, watch the remaining modules uh, and hopefully you will find some useful applications in your professional career. Uh, thank you for your attention. Um, my contact information is listed there and we look forward to hearing from you.